all the time holy ghost holy ghost all the time every day holy every day god all the time day. holy ghost fellowship communication holy communion god guess what I, if he's my best day. friend we're besties then i'm his holy best friend ghost god goes both ways The Holy Ghost is Jesus God in the earth right today, and you walk with him by saying words. I'm Andrew Hemstrad. I thank you for joining us. If you're new here, those words that I just said might seem a little strange to you, but if you stick around long enough, we'll, we'll be able to explain these things. I'll end up saying it so many different ways that you'll be able to get it. That reminds me of a, one of my mentors, Charles Capps. One of the people that really exposed me to the word of faith there were others also but he really made it clear to me and that's one thing he would say over and over is that he's going to say this so many ways say so many ways that you can't miss it you'll finally understand it'll dawn on your spirit and you'll have a revelation well the holy ghost is god in the earth today and we walk with him by saying words well charles caps was such a blessing to me and a mentor in my life and he did make real to me the word of faith now when you break down our message the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today well that seems pretty explanatory you'll either get that or you won't get that who's the Holy Ghost well he's a person and he's in the earth well then you walk with him by saying words that is literally the word of faith we learn how to walk with God through the vehicle of the word of faith so I am a word of faith preacher and I come up under dad Hagen and Charles caps and many others but we've learned that the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today in fact it was Charles caps I remember the day I heard Charles caps say that that the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead who's active in the earth today here's the Holy Ghost he's the one in the earth the father's in heaven Jesus is where in heaven at the father's right hand and so who's in the earth with us the Holy Ghost it's just that Charles Capps and and um, dad Hagen they, they this wasn't their call this wasn't their, their message was to get the word of faith in the earth so that when we came along afterwards we knew how to walk with the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth today is that making sense talking about the Holy Ghost being the only part of the Godhead in the earth today acts chapter 7 this is the stoning of of stephen and if we go right to verse 55 but he stephen being full of the holy ghost who was stephen full of the holy ghost and we know the holy ghost is a person stephen he being full of the holy ghost where was stephen he was on earth looked up steadfastly into heaven so he had an open vision he could see into heaven right and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God so where's Jesus in heaven at the right hand of God the Father are you getting this where was the Holy Ghost in the earth with Stephen pretty clear right Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead actively in the earth today why it's his dispensation so if you're gonna walk with God who are you gonna walk with the Holy Ghost because you're in the earth and he's in the earth thank God we're in the Holy Ghost dispensation right but how do we walk with God we walk with him by saying words this is the word of faith that we preach Romans 10 8 but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach you seeing that the words in your heart and it's in your mouth and it's in your mouth and it's in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach that is how you walk with God in the earth today and God in the earth today is the Holy Ghost are you getting this pretty simple message when you break it down and you understand it in my opinion and only because I'm coming up after dad Hagen and Charles Capps and many others I don't believe they didn't take it far enough in my opinion in in 
showing us that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and the only part that we walk with but that wasn't his main message do you understand that that's my point it's not that he didn't know it I know for a fact that dad Hagen knew so many things that he wouldn't share with people because it wasn't time they weren't ready for it I've heard him specifically say that they're not ready for this they aren't gonna understand it but he his mission was he said go teach my people faith so that was his main mission and he did that he did it very well and I'm under him so therefore part of my mission is to teach people faith that's why a lot of the things that you'll see online under our website is about faith and how to walk by faith and how to speak by faith and how to live by faith but my calling is specifically the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words saying words of faith are you getting this we walk with him the Holy Ghost in the word of faith so we needed to know the word of faith in order to know how to walk with him but we must go here must go where we must go here that the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead in the earth and how are we gonna walk with him by faith and words of faith so if you will listen and you have your ears opened I will take you there I have this message of the Holy Ghost only and as we go there together you'll be able to to go into this space this room of the Holy Ghost and it'll be great where is Jesus he's in heaven at the Father's right hand where does that leave you and I realize you know lots of times you think about it oh, I'm sad Jesus isn't with us but we've we've put the erroneous conception on people a religious thinking that they're walking around with Jesus when the reality is they're supposed to be in fellowship with the Holy Ghost we walk with the Holy Ghost in the earth by speaking words but Jesus isn't here but we've left the religious impression that he is I know you know what I'm talking about but that must change because you can't live in that world it's a religious world that won't take you where you need to go but I'm here to help deliver you from that thinking aren't you glad say yes amen he's helping me be delivered from the bondage of religious thinking and I'm a man of God with a message that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all here it says the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you be is what be is present tense right meaning so the communion or the fellowship koinonia is the Greek word it literally means intimate personal daily fellowship friendship we could say the personal fellowship be with you with the Holy Ghost be means now with you so who are we in personal daily communion and fellowship and friendship with the Holy Ghost in 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9 it says you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was say was though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor became past tense that you through his poverty might be rich those things are past tense his grace was past tense he's already done it does that make sense but the communion that we talked about in verse in chapter 13 verse 14 the communion is now say the communion is now the fellowship is now glory be to God forever so the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is past tense and Jesus is not here the communion with the Holy Ghost is present tense because the Holy Ghost is here first thing you need to know about the Holy Ghost is he's not a power and I think a lot of us have missed it there thinking that the Holy Ghost is a power but here it says the communion of the Holy Ghost you don't commune or have fellowship or personal friendship with a power right you are a person and he's a person therefore you can have communication as part of the communion fellowship friendship 
the Holy Ghost can become your best friend and should become your best friend he's not a power the Holy Ghost is a person and I've covered this on many other videos he is a person he's a divine person but no less a person now communion is two ways right the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you be present tense with you well if you be with him it's two ways there's no communi communion without it going both ways it's a give and a take he communes with you you commune with him well I've covered this at length I'll put some links down below for you to catch up on those things if you don't understand it but the Holy Ghost is a person and he desires your fellowship that's one of the main translations of the word communion in most of the modern translation is fellowship he desires your fellowship would it be written in the word if it wasn't his will no and therefore it's his desire to fellowship with you he desires your friendship say he desires my friendship but are you his friend I would say that it's impossible for you to be his friend if you think he's just a power or if you don't have anything to do with him right so we need to know him as God know him as a person know him in the earth and know him as a friend and have that intimate communi communication and communion with him would you would you be a good friend if you didn't talk to him no if you had a really good friend you'd be on the phone or texting or whatever you do these days all the time say all the time all the time Holy Ghost Holy Ghost all the time every day every day all the time Holy Ghost fellowship communication communion and guess what I if he's my best friend or besties then I'm his best friend goes both ways so anyway he desires your fellowship or your friendship but as Lord because remember he's God as Lord he desires your attention he desires your attention say he desires my attention Proverbs 420 says attend to my words well we know the Holy Ghost is the one who inspired the written Word of God we need to attend to his words meaning when he says something we're supposed to attend to it that's what a Lord would have you do so as a as a friend he desires your fellowship as a Lord he desires your attention as God listen as God he desires your worship but we'll get more on that later so let's go to uh, John chapter 14 glory be to God forever did you find it John chapter 14 verse 16 I will pray this is in red letters this is Jesus talking I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter say comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth who do we know this to be this is the Holy Ghost so Jesus is gonna go and be with the Father and he's gonna send another he'll give you another comforter say another what does another mean meaning it's another of some they were concerned Jesus was talking about leaving and so they said they don't be concerned about it I'm gonna send another another of what another very much like me right so we can actually look to what Jesus was to them to see what the another was and this word comforter is paraclete means one called alongside to help a helper an advocate a friend was Jesus a friend yeah was Jesus a person first of all so Jesus is gonna send another he's gonna he's not gonna send another rabbit he's not gonna send another power he's gonna send another person we know the person to be the Holy Ghost so he'll send another another like Jesus was Jesus a person yes so he's gonna send another person when we're talking about like Jesus did Jesus help them this is why they were concerned yeah Jesus helped them Jesus even fed them at times Jesus helped pay their taxes did Jesus stand by them yes did Jesus strengthen them yes did Jesus advocate for them yes did Jesus lead them yes 
he's going to send another who will do all of these things right and that's all that's all included in that word comforter was Jesus their leader why yes of course he was so Jesus is gonna send another leader he's gonna send another one who will lead them how many of you know the Holy Ghost is being the one who leads the children of God are led by the Spirit of God he sent another leader was Jesus their master yes was Jesus their Lord he's gonna send another one who's a leader who's their master who's their Lord are you here well let's just see if they called him Lord if we can see that they called him Lord we know that he's gonna send another one that they could call Lord are you here John chapter 14 verse 5 Thomas saith unto him Lord we know not whither thou goest how can we uh, how can we know the way what did they call him what did Thomas call Jesus Lord Jesus is gonna send another that you can call Lord are you here look at verse 8 Philip saith unto him that remember Thomas said it now Philip saith unto him Lord what did Philip call Jesus Lord Jesus is gonna send another let's go back to chapter 13 I know I could go on and on here I'm just trying to prove a point that they called Jesus Lord he was their leader he was their guide he was their master and they called him Lord then Jesus said even after he said all of these things I'm gonna send another leader guide master Lord are you getting this John chapter 13 verse 36 Simon Peter we know him said unto him Lord whither goest thou and it says and Jesus answered him so they were calling him Lord and Jesus answered them didn't rebuke them and then later on he said I'm going to send another are you getting this so when the another is come it's okay to call him the leader of the church the guide the helper the master and the Lord because it's his dispensation trying to be as clear as possible like Charles Capps I'm gonna to try to go around this and say it so many different ways that you get it because we literally are in the earth with one part of the Godhead the Holy Ghost and we walk with him so suffice it to say he will send another are you getting this Jesus was not just a friend was Jesus just a friend I'm sure in a in a casual conversation the disciples would have said yes he's my friend right but he was more than a friend are you here so when I I'm off I'm very fine with people saying the Holy Ghost is my friend I say that but he's more than a friend the Holy Ghost is more than a friend that's what I'm trying to get across here he is your friend but he's also the leader the guide your master and yes your Lord in the earth I know a lot of people have a problem with that but you shouldn't I'm showing it to you out of the scriptures so suffice it to say that he Jesus will send another Lord master and dare I say God into the earth he did send God the Holy Ghost to be with us in the earth is he the Holy Ghost God you got to ask yourself these questions I'm saying that he's the one in the earth he's the part of the Godhead in the earth is he God yes he's God and he can't just go casually yes yes he's got well if he's God then he's in the earth and then we should be doing certain things for him and with him in a different compact capacity than what most people are and here's the deal I'm trying to sell you something that you haven't bought you trying to sell me something I'm trying to sell you something that you haven't bought part of my job is to get you to this place where you know the Holy Ghost in the earth as God and when you know him as God you will begin to worship him as God and you will say the words I worship you Holy Ghost now I know that is a, a large step for most people because their their religious doctrine has kept them from it and hasn't gone there well that's where we need to go I just recently had someone write to me and I try to answer these questions as best as I could and you might even be thinking the same thing this person said there is no place in the Bible that tells us to worship the Holy Ghost even though he is God 
so this person acknowledged that he is God but then she went on to say or he went on to say that there's no place in the Bible that tell us tells us to worship the Holy Ghost even though he is God and a lot of people would agree with that I've heard that before I've had this accusation before that somehow I messed up here because I tell people to worship the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today specifically using the words I worship you Holy Ghost and they have a problem with it well number one they haven't been taught it but this is the exact thing they'll say I will say to you Matthew 22 29 says you do err, or you're making an error because you don't know the scriptures or the power of God you're missing it remember you're talking to someone who's been worshiping the Holy Ghost for years as God so you're, you're too late to this party if you were saying those things to try to convince me well you've missed it because I'm already there but I'm trying to get you to go there and I'm gonna show you specific scriptures that tell us to worship the Holy Ghost if you listen you gotta listen though you gotta hear with the ears of your spirit the Bible specifically works very hard to show and reveal that the Holy Ghost is God and the same Bible specifically tells you to worship God are you here Revelations 22 9 specifically says that worship God and there are many others you should know that innately you should worship God well who is God he's the Holy Ghost are you getting this same so the Bible isn't confused the Bible isn't working against itself the Bible is working with itself to reveal things to you that you don't know yet your tradition is what's working against you and working against itself the traditions of men Jesus said make the Word of God ineffectual or of no effect there is a specific place in the Bible that says to worship God and I think I'm gonna take you to it and so we can look at it and you can see it by yourself and it specifically says to worship the Holy Ghost I know you're like oh I don't think there is one well then then you're trying not to see it and that's the way it is a lot of times with people in their doctrines they hold on to it so tightly that they they try not to see it they're actually twisting the scriptures to go so that they can't see what the truth is I'm gonna say this so many ways that you get it Luke chapter 4 verse 1 and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost we already know the Holy Ghost is a person and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness who was Jesus led by the Spirit right and that spirit would be the Holy Ghost so was Jesus a follower of the Holy Ghost here it says he was did he obey the Spirit the Bible says that Jesus was led by the Spirit so he had to follow the Spirit he was a follower of the Holy he had to obey the Holy Ghost Jesus obeyed the Holy Ghost Jesus followed the Holy Ghost and we know the Holy Ghost is a person did Jesus submit to the Holy Ghost yes he submitted by obeying hearing and following the Holy Ghost Jesus Jesus knew the Holy Ghost as God and obeyed and submitted and followed and was led by the Spirit Luke chapter 4 verse 14 and Jesus returned after being up at 40 days 40 nights and after Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit what power did Jesus return in his own power no he returned in the power of the Spirit so he was led by the Spirit he followed the Spirit he obeyed the Spirit he submitted to the Spirit you could almost say that the Spirit was his master or the Spirit was his Lord at that time in the earth and then he returned in the power of the Spirit not his own power the power was the Spirit's power that he returned in so he had to get to know the Holy Ghost well enough submit well enough say submit submit well enough to the Lordship of the Spirit so that the power would be not his but the power would be the Spirit's are you getting this verse 18 he says the Spirit of the what 
the Lord is upon me who did Jesus call the Spirit Jesus called the Spirit Lord and that makes sense now because we know he said submitted to the Spirit followed the Spirit obeyed the Spirit now he's saying the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he personal has anointed me who anointed Jesus 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 anointed Jesus no the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost's power the Holy Ghost was the Lord of Jesus at this time I know that sounds strange to your ears but I'm trying to get you to go somewhere please please come with me it's much better on this side the power was the spirits not his so Jesus calls the Spirit Lord are you here can you understand that who did Jesus call the Holy Ghost Lord wouldn't that be what he would be if you're following him you're obeying him you're submitting to him and then he gives you power Lord makes sense so who is Jesus following obeying who is Jesus under the power and authority of who is Jesus serving the will and purpose of say serving Jesus was serving the Spirit of the Lord that was on him that anointed him to do certain things say serving we know Jesus called him Lord we know Jesus was serving him all right I think you're ready for this he was serving the will and purpose of the Holy Ghost that's what he was submitted to that's what he came in the power of let's go back to verse 8 Luke chapter 4 verse 8 and Jesus answered and said unto him get thee behind me Satan for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve who is Jesus serving the Holy Ghost who did Jesus follow the Holy Ghost who is Jesus serving only the Holy Ghost are you here was Jesus lying was Jesus disobedient at this time because if now he's serving and following and being led by and under the power of the Holy Ghost and he said oh you're only supposed to serve the Lord your God then he would be out of line with his own word who's the Lord God here had to be the Holy Ghost thou shalt what worship the Lord thy God well we know that him only shall he serves so he was serving only the Holy Ghost and the will of the Holy Ghost and it says here thou shalt worship that same Lord thy God and him only shall you serve are you getting this so who did Jesus say to worship the Lord your God who would the Lord his God be the Holy Ghost that's a whole bunch of people got that and a whole bunch of people are just mad at me but I'm telling you if you get it you'll be able to walk in freedom in the earth today we're supposed to be having the Lordship of the Holy Ghost we follow him where the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God if I'm led by someone I'm following them they're my master they're my Lord get over it so we see that Jesus was serving the Holy Ghost and him only say him only now don't tell me okay you know, it doesn't specifically say the Holy Ghost here in that scripture oh it says uh, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve this is sandwiched in between the context you're taking it out of context to say that it's anything else but the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost he is full of the Holy Ghost was led by the Spirit right he returned in the power of the Spirit then he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and in between that it says thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve so it follows that Jesus said we are to worship the Holy Ghost God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so when people say that there's no scripture that says we're supposed to worship the Holy Ghost even though he's God I hope that you can see that we've proven that to be not the case not too long ago the Holy Ghost said to me if they knew me as God they would worship me obviously the problem is there that people don't know him as God they know him as a power of God they know him as an anointing of God they know him as something but they don't know him as God because if they knew him as God they would worship him and if you worship him you can open up your mouth and say I worship you Holy Ghost 
and when you do that that sets a whole bunch of things in motion glory be to God forever now I said this last week I thought it made a lot of sense if you ever heard the old TV shows called let's make a deal it was a game show and this guy named Monty Hall from what I can remember I haven't seen it in a while but he would go out into the audience right and he would have some money in his hand you know be like a hundred dollars or something and he'd go up to the people and a lot of times there are a lot of women in the audience and he'd go um, if you can give me uh, a red phone I'll give you this hundred dollars you know and people were bringing all kinds of stuff at that time because they whatever he asked you know if I oh here's an old red phone with a dial-up rotary thing and he gives it to him he goes oh there's a thought there's your hundred dollars you know or he may oh now I've got three hundred dollars and anybody let's see he'll he'll ask somebody to stand up and he'll go hey well can you give me uh, three sticks of peppermint gum and they'll go oh yeah and then, you know and if they didn't have it well then he wouldn't give them the money but if they did have it then he would give them the three hundred dollars and then invariably after that he would ask them now would you trade that three hundred dollars for what's behind curtain number two and they'd have to sit there and go oh because they've all seen it behind door uh, but behind curtain number two might be a new car well three hundred dollars a new car I'd take the curtain right but they don't know what's behind the curtain are you here and I remember I said last week you know at one time I was watching and there was a donkey behind the curtain and they go you know and they were very sad I don't know why you probably a donkey be worth 300 bucks sell them out front but anyway I guess you understand what's going on so I have personally bought what's behind this curtain what I'm gonna be talking about I've bought into it so I know what's behind the curtain a lot of people don't know what's behind the curtain but let's go to 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 let's look at verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil or curtain shall be taken away now what happens when the curtain was taken away you can see what's behind the curtain you can see what you bought into you know before they open the curtain you don't know what you bought nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away now the Lord is and they open the curtain the Lord is now we are in this dispensation okay so I say I bought into it I'll let, whether you buy into it or not it's still the truth it's what's behind curtain number three in this dispensation that's the only curtain there is and when the curtain is pulled back they say now the Lord is open the curtain now the Lord is what's it say that spirit wait a second where's Jesus I was expecting Jesus to be behind that curtain Jesus isn't there because Jesus isn't here is this making sense and you got to buy into it you buy into the fact that Jesus isn't here and I'm telling you when you buy into the fact that behind that curtain is just the Holy Ghost all of the other things begin to open up to you he becomes God in the earth today and you worship him now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty that's your prize where the Spirit is Lord there is Liberty where the Spirit was Lord in Jesus's life there was Liberty freedom anointing and power and it wasn't until the Spirit was Lord that he could say the Spirit of the Lord is on me and I have power some of you are getting this now the Lord is that Spirit where the Spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty where's Liberty there where the Spirit is Lord and if the Spirit is Lord you would worship him and now the Lord is pull the curtain back that Spirit those who accept his Lordship there is Liberty say that those who accept his Lordship there is Liberty those who don't accept his Lordship have less Liberty when the Spirit is worshipped there is Liberty and you are changed from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord so when the Spirit is worshipped there is Liberty a Liberty not available to those who don't accept his Lordship and if you accept his Lordship and accept that he is God you would worship him 
he says is if you will worship me I will give you anything you want I've heard him say that over and over again if you will worship me I will give you anything you want how can he do that he's God he can give you anything you want why would that be because you're his friend you're giving him the proper place in the earth so if you will worship the Holy Ghost he will give you anything you want remember thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve when you know that the Holy Ghost is God and you begin to worship him and him only are you serving he will do anything for you he will give you anything you want and right now Holy Ghost I ask you to go and visit these people online go visit them and as they know you as God and use the words I worship you Holy Ghost angel I ask you to go and do a specific thing for them and I thank you for it in Jesus name well I thank you for watching we're glad to have you here make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.